So after all of that, uh, nervous fiddling, I'll be right in the place to present, uh, present you all about um, LLD from a user perspective. So this is a sort of high-level description of what you would do to use LLD, and I'll explain what it is in a few minutes for those who are unfamiliar. So this isn't a deep dive into what LLD is and what it does. This is more like how would I actually go about using it on the assumption that most of you may have heard of LLD but probably haven't tried it out or know what its status is, that sort of thing. Okay, so what we're going to cover today, um, basically what is LLD, how might I use it, um, how do I actually build it, because as, as of today there isn't a package that you can download with LLD in it. Um, there may be on BSD systems I think, uh, but certainly not on, um, not on I, I don't think any standard Linux distribution has, um, has taken it. Um, we or, three weeks. Three weeks, okay, yeah, and I just noticed something, uh, I think almost a it might even have been this morning that it might actually get into the LLVM 4.0 release. So, um, so it's looking like it's going to become slightly more um, easy to get hold of in there. But it's actually not too difficult to build from source if you wanted to fiddle around with it. Um, next bit is what can I expect if I actually try and use this thing? <laughs> um, and, um, and then just a little bit at the end of, um, you know, if you're interested and want to give it a go, how can I contribute to um, LLD? Um, so what I'm going to be covering is the COF or the MACO versions, as I'll come to in a couple of slides' time. LLD is kind of like three linkers in one from the same set of code bases. I'm only really familiar with the ELF version, and I'm assuming that at FOSDEM most of you are going to be using the ELF version rather than the Microsoft version or the Apple version. Um, um, I'm, I'm basically working on the ARM port for um, LLD, um, so I, and my sort of background is in sort of ARM-based um, tool chains. Okay. Right. okay, so this is a very, very basic slide for people who may not be familiar with what linkers do. Um, they're usually the sort of program that sort of hides behind the compiler and um, you stick all your objects and libraries in and it does its job. Um, so apologies if you're already well familiar with the sort of linker's job is I won't spend too much on this slide but um, in effect LLD takes the place over here so compiler compiles source codes to objects those objects uh, have basically got symbolic references between each other so they'll say like um, I reference some symbol called printf or you know underscore start or something like that um, and um, quite often the li what the, link the linker's first task is is to say take in all of these references saying that the, that the objects say, I need X, I need Y, and then it's got to go search through all the libraries that you've put on the command line um, and, um, and then basically say, okay, I see definitions of function X, function Y, and these functions need Z and whatever, and then basically just load everything all into one bit. And then once you've got everything all loaded, you've then got to resolve all those symbolic references so that... Um, the reference to printf gets connected with the definition of printf. So that, in a nutshell, is what a linker does. It's, there's various other bits that you can do to sort of control where bits go. So people doing embedded development will often use a linker control, special linker control script. They'll say, hey, I want all of my um, vectors to go at address zero where, um, you know, on certain embedded systems and the like. And at the end of it, you're left with a single file that you can then um, use as a shared library and executable or, you know, or, so, or some sort of slightly more concrete form than what came in, at, it came in at the front. So that's what LLD is trying to be. It's trying to be a sort of system linker. It's not really in the state to be a library at the moment. And I think there has been some arguments on the list about, you know, is that the right design for LLD to be a program or a library? Um, there are arguments both ways. Um, typically, as a sort of person who's developed linkers over the years, typically linking is an all-or-nothing job. You tend not to want a bit of a linker. You tend to want all of it or none of it. Um, so I think using it as a library, I don't know whether anyone's come up with a really compelling use case to do it yet. It sounds nice in theory, but I, I don't know yet whether anyone's worked out well or, or actually come up with a compelling enough reason to do it. Okay. So LLD as a project kind of, I guess, has existed for quite some years, um, but it only really development of it kick-started in about um, 2015. 
Um, prior to that, there was a single code base, and it was based on a sort of macro concept of an atom, where an atom roughly maps to one function, which, and you could then move these atoms about. And that works quite well in macro, but um, in ELF and COF, where you can have a concept of a section that can have multiple functions in, um, the ELF and COF linkers basically had to keep translating to and from, or the atom-based model, putting constraints in, and it was slowing up development quite considerably. So um, at about the time of 2015, the COF code base forked off and basically said, no, it's no, there's not a lot of point in maintaining this atom model for the COF linker. Um, I can you know, s streamline the development much easier. So um, ended up with a much faster, simpler to maintain code base out of that. And then uh, probably a few weeks to a month later, the ELF um, back end was sort of stripped out under the same sort of principles. So we've effectively got ELF and COF, which are kind of streamlined pla platform linkers. <coughs> and you have the MACO based Atom model, which is kind of like a linker toolkit for sort of building linkers. Um, so these, thi these two um, linkers don't really share code. Um, they do share algorithms and they do share sort of concepts in a similar sort of style. Um, but the design decision was made that it was bet it would that the amount of work that you did to transform ELF and COF into the common data structures and back again wasn't worth the effort and it was better to share at the sort of algorithm and concept level. Um, so that's one of the one of the a big design decision difference that you would have from say LD.BFD where you've got BFD which is um, um, the sort of uh, translate all object formats to BFD, work on BFD, translate back which means you can share code in the center of the linker but you've, then you've got sort of quite a all the back ends and front ends have to sort of translate themselves to that BFD representation. Okay, and it has been written with an emphasis on performance. Um, so I think that's probably, as users, um, it's, pr it's probably the one reason why you want, uh, want, would want to give LLD a try, um, unless you were bothered about licensing or um, other sort of source code um, um, areas. Okay. So this is, and I'm going to put a huge disclaimer on these numbers here. So this is um, a machine that I've only recently got from my company's IT department with a, PCI, with a PCIe SSD, um, lots of memory, and a fast processor. I certainly on my older machines didn't see anywhere near like the, the performance differential on this. So I think this is very much going to be a case of um, um, when when there's a huge amount of disk bandwidth, which is in effect what a link is doing, is a, it's basically a slightly clever form of CAT, where it's concatenating everything, lots and lots of binary data together. So you're mainly limited by how fast you can copy gigabytes of data from one place to the other. So you could say if you've got a slow hard disk system, that's going to swamp all the computation that you, you, you might do. So if, if you've got a nice SSD, that will emphasize the differences. So these programs also are huge. So I deliberately set out to say, what can I find that's going to be horribly nasty? So Clang linked fully statically with full debug information, O0, produces an, an exec... Well, on, the, on my machine, it was roughly 1.5 gigabytes in size, the output file. Um, so that's, that's huge. Uh, but LLD tuned through that in about six seconds, um, and BFD took about a minute. So if you're working on a gigantic code base, I would say it's worth giving LLD a look because um, you might find that your compile link execute step could go down from a painful weight to something fairly quickly. So if you say you just change one file, one, one string in a printf or something and have to relink, then um, that could actually you know, give you quite a bit of benefit. Not, not so much for, say, an overnight build or anything like that because that will be swamped by the time of all the compilations that you have to do. But that's where I would say the, um, the primary reason to use LLD at the moment. Because they, wh the way they've been designed, well, LLD's been designed is that the, the ELF version tries to mimic the same interface that Gold and LD do. So it just can be a drop-in replacement. But one of, the, one of the other bits of that is that, well, OK, it's not doing anything else. So there's, n th there's only really a use, use to use it as a substitute. So why might I not want to use LLD. I've given you the good side, which is the performance. So well, what, what's the drawbacks for that? So 
I'd say that LLD doesn't implement all of Gold or LD's features yet. Um, certainly in, say, the link control script area, that's, that work is in sort of active development right now. Whether it ever gets all of the niche features of, um, of GNU LD, um, I don't know. I don't know of anyone using this heavily in an embedded context right now. At the moment, it's very heavily tuned towards sort of um, Linux, BSD style you know, operating system platform linkers. Uh, embedded systems tend to be horrible to linkers, they, you know, with things like um, yeah, multiple address spaces with different memories and different constraints and uh, all of that type of thing where you've got, you've got to have quite stringent placement requirements. So I think to take, if you were using an embedded system, I would probably say you'll, you'll, you will be one of the trailblazers if you start adopting LLD. But if you do, please do and report bugs and we can start working on that. Um, and um, it's got a limited amount of users compared to Gold and, and, um, and BFD. Um, the BSD community are adopting LLD probably more aggressively than anyone else, and um, they're doing some great work in, in, in improving it. So um, um, hopefully that's one thing that can use to, to, to drive forward the adoption of LLD, is to have a big user base full of people all using it and finding out where the problems are. Um, I guess limited support for number of targets. I could say the main target at the moment is um, is H8664 or AMD64. That's the one where the predominant number of users are on there. There is a good port for A64. Um, I think that's now you know do, running a build bot. It's got tests. Um, it's self-hosting. Um, ARM needs range extensions. Um, at the moment, so it can't handle big links at the moment. Um, but in a sort of small f station, it, 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 it's getting there. I think the MIPS port is well maintained. Um, there is a port for power, uh, AMD GPU and x86-32, but they tend not to see too many commits. So I don't know too much about, about that. And of course, if you're happy with the performance of your linker at the moment, there's probably not a good reason to change. Okay. So how might I go about using LLD tomorrow, given that hopefully it will be in the LLD 4.0 release? So very, very simple. If anyone has been used to building LLVM, you basically put um, LLD in the tools directory like you would put Clang, um, and then just do um, uh, the standard CMake Ninja and, uh, and, um, and install. And um, you'll get a, um, a, a, an LLD in your standard build slash bin directory along with all the other um, LLVM tools. So what do you actually get out of the end of it is a, um, you'll get a, a tool called LLD and you'll get a sim link to it called ld.lld. Now that's very similar to what you would get with say on a, I'm just thinking of an Ubuntu Debian sort of system where if you look in slash user slash bin you'll get ld.bfd, ld.gold, and you then set a sim link for ld to either gold or bfd, depending on what you want. So, um, so typically, the generic LLD is like can can basically by setting a flag called flavor, you can say act as if you're the Microsoft linker, act as if you're the GNU linker. If you use ld.lld or ld a sim link with ld, it'll infer that you want to try and um, mimic um, GNU. LD. So the intention that um, generally I think these types of linkers that you generally tend not to call the linker directly. It's usually the compiler driver that will feed it, feed you with um, all of the various objects. If you, anyone went to Brooks Davis's talk on Hello World yesterday, you'll be familiar with all of the extra objects like CRT1, CRTI, that um, the compiler driver will feed to the linker to make everything work. It's generally not just your um, Hello World.o and well, um, and libc that, um, that get involved in there. Um, so yeah, intention is that it's just a drop-in replacement. Okay. So what I found the most reliable way if you want to use L L um, LLD is to sim link your slash user slash bin LD to ld.lld. Um, um, on, you know, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, it's very, that's pretty much how you select between um, the GNU linker, which I'll call ld.bfd, or the GNU Gold, which is um, ld.gold. Um, 
and um, I say there beware of build systems that include their own tools so for example when I built Chrome and Firefox and started trying to say well okay what if I use L um, LLD and I found out that, they, that the build system had created a whole new um, directory just for their own bin utils and they copied their own versions and, um, and, and, and directed the linker directly at that so you'll, you'll sometimes find on these big projects that, they've, that the build systems will try and defeat you and you have to fiddle around a little bit um, at that point now, if you're using Clang, you, there is a, a flag called dash f use dash ld that does exist on GCC as well, but GCC won't accept LD, uh, LLD at the moment. It will only accept uh, BFD and gold. But if you're using um, um, a Clang, you can use f use ld equals LLD. So that, what ha that means is that when the compiler invokes the linker, it'll say, I'll look on the path for LD dot LLD. So that would be a way of, say, installing ld.lld in your slash user slash bin directory and then not have to fiddle around with symlinks or change things. You would just control that with, um, with that particular flag there. Okay. So what are the differences between um, LD, LLD? So I think main differences, now you, would, you'd, you actually have to try pretty hard to make this make a difference. Um, but the, um, the way that um, the linkers search for libraries is subtly different um, in that... Um, Basically, the GNU linkers, they search the command line from left to right, and they only search each library once. So if you have things like trans-circulative circular dependencies between libraries where you kind of have an object, well, a member A in one library and a member B, and they each call each other, you sometimes have to break that cycle by either using something called a start group, end group, or you add the libraries in multiple times on the command line. LLD doesn't do that. It basically sort of... Um, searches the symbol table each each time it sees the um, the archive and then it just will automatically go back and to that search table it doesn't sort of require you to put li um, libraries on the command line multiple times again there, there are there are contrived examples where this makes a difference um, but you do have to try hard to actually run into that <coughs> Now, there's no default linker script for um, LLD, so if you're ever using normal LD, you can type in LD minus minus for both, and it'll tell you the linker script that it's using. So if you do this for, say, a standard Linux link, you'll get a linker script about two pages long, full of, full, full, full of stuff. Um, so what LD, uh, LLD does in this particular case is it's got a... It, it has a completely separate code path to handle that case, so um, you, that, again, can cause slight differences. And there's, been, there's not any attempt to exactly match the behavior of GNU LD for um, linker scripts. I think the idea is to, to come close to or to use, you know, to, to basically match where the behavior matters. Um, but the sort of uh, linker control scripts are somewhat loosely specified, um, and they're, they're, they're often only specify a part of what's needed. So, for example, you can write a linker script that specifies just one portion of your image and then you leave the rest of it to the linker. Um, and so LD and LLD might make different decisions in that particular area. Um, and also some, some options are just not implemented um, and um, quite often there's some command line options that are just, you know, they'll be accepted because they're passed by GCC every time you do a link, um, but they're not actually needed, so LD, LLD just ignores them. Okay, so here's a very, very quick data. I won't go into too much detail about this, uh, but this is just showing an example of some of the design decisions that LLD has taken that's different to LD. So on your left, you can see two program headers, an RO and an RW, um, and you'll also see that um, the green bits are the sort of executable code and the um, sort of cyan bits are the um, um, sort of RO data. You'll see that uh, LLD groups its RO data first before the executable bits and has a, a, set, a three program he header layout. And you can find that some tools that assume the two can, um, sort of program header tables can get confused by that. So uh, that's, again, something just to, be, to, to watch out for. Generally, this sort of thing doesn't matter. Okay, so as I sort of um, start wrapping up, 
Um, I started going through this um, um, earlier on, then realised I had a slide later on. Um, but uh, I think the general status, I'd say, I'd say the uh, AMD 64 one is looking pretty good. A lot of work's been done over the past few months to get the um, linker scripts working. Um, there's several build bots that, involve, um, that basically go through Clang, LLD, um, you know, two-stage build bots that check everything works. Um, and um, I think as of the January 2017, I saw a message post list that the free BSD based system, kernel plus um, user space, um, has been linking and running with, uh, with, with LLD. And I think there's also some progress going through the ports. Um, and um, I think, you know, as you can see there, 20,000 out of 26,000 are linking properly. And I think we reckon that some of the ones that aren't are. Not, there's not 6,000 individual problems there. There's probably a handful of problems that are causing, ca causing those. Um, and there's a sort of upstream tracking bug to, so that if you're interested in sort of keeping that progress. So AOT64, we've got little NDN support only, but we have got a build bot running to make sure that it doesn't, you know, it keeps at least self-hosting and um, linking Clang. Um, um, and What's that, sorry? And the test suite. And the test suite, right, okay. And um, ARM, we've got little Endian support only. We're missing range extension thunks, so we can't link Clang yet, because um, that's a rather too large for a, um, an ARM v7 system. Um, that's what my personal project is at the moment, to uh, add range extension thunks. So once that's done there, we should have enough to get a build bot together, and that will sort of uh, bring ARM up to the same level of support as um, AARC64. Okay. MIPS. Now, I don't. I have, must confess, I don't know too much about MIPS as a system myself. Um, it's actively maintained, um, so um, I, I'm, I'm going to make the assumption that, um, based on the last status update, that um, it was going. It passes all the single and multi-source tests, and the LLVM test suite still holds. And um, I, th I think it's probably. My guess is that it will be in the same sort of state as the AX64 um, ports. Probably not quite as heavily used as the. Um, as the AMD64 one, but certainly in, if, you, if you're on a MIPS architecture, it will be worth taking a look. Um, X86 32-bit, I think it's complete, but I, as far as I know, I, I've not seen this being actively tested. And the last time I tried trying some things out when I was making some modifications to GNU iFunk, I found some problems. So I think I don't know, again, too many people are actually using this one right now. Um, but it's certainly, I think, if, if there were any bugs reported on it, they could get fixed fairly straight, straightforwardly. Um, there is a port to PowerPC and to AMD GPU, but I've not seen any traffic on those for quite some time. I'm not sure of the status of them, um, but just based on lack of traffic, I, 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 I don't know. That, um, it, it, it's probably best that I just say status unknown. If you've got one, it might be worth trying, but I don't know whether anyone's actively maintaining it right now. Okay, so what can you do to tr contribute to LLD? So one of the things that I think, any, you know, as any of the sort of LLD maintainers would say, what we really need right now is people to you know, go out and use it and report bugs and you know, find out what's not working, that type of thing. Because um, uh, we're, we're thinking it's getting to the stage where you, know, you can actually genuinely give it a go and expect that the program should work, not, well, you can give it a go and hope that it might work. And um, I think that that's certainly something that we, we, we would appreciate. If you want to um, um, contribute patches, of course, uh, uh, LLD is covered by the, um, um, the developer policy. You can find the owners on the various, um, uh, the various places and read these there. And um, um, there isn't an awful lot of stuff on LLD out there in terms of sort of full documentation. There is a sort of LLD site to the documentation, but it probably doesn't tell you an awful lot about how to go about um, developing it. Um, I did a presentation at the LLVM Cauldron last year on sort of LLD structure, and I think most of that still holds. Um, Rui, the um, main author of the COF port, um, um, did, a, um, did a presentation in 2016 on the sort of, um, um, at the, the dev meeting about LLD. Um, so those are the two main video sources that I can point you to. Um, any links to content before 2015 will be about the Atom-based linker, so unless you're going to be working on the Maco Atom-based stuff, um, I will probably ignore anything that came back from 2015 unless you're sort of interested in tracking through the history. 
Okay. Thanks very much, everyone. Um, I don't know how many times have I got any no, time. We have plenty of time for okay, right. Okay, so I've come a little bit short on that, but uh, so we've got plenty of time for questions. Or if you want to go get your lunch, I probably. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to run out of here as quickly as possible, I would. Yes. So. I, just, I would comment on the status. That right. Okay. On previous DAR64 is pretty much the same as AMD64. Oh, that's good news. Need a dull phone linker shortly. Right. Um, AMD's been working through the ports collection similar to AMD64. Okay. Um, Right. Um, we are missing some features from large programs. So previous base is mostly okay because mm. it's tiny little Unix programs. Uh -huh. But I I'm sure client doesn't work. Yes. Right. Okay. So just to repeat that, just for anyone who didn't catch that on, on, on the thing. So um, um, update um, on the BSD side. So the AMD um, AART 64 should be and MIPS 64 should be fairly close to AMD 64 in terms of their coverage. MIPS 64 or MIPS may be missing some support for large programs. Um, the BSD um, sort of base system tends to be small Unix um, programs rather than sort of giant programs. So, yes, yeah, so, but, but work is definitely actively ongoing in, in that area and we hope to be better soon. Okay, any more questions? Yeah. Is it easy to summarize why LLD is so much faster than Gold and LD? Okay. Assuming you have huge disk bandwidth and we're making a huge uh, program. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think part, part, partly it's because it's trying to do. It's it probably does less. It's probably the shortest thing, which is the same as any fast program. It's obviously doing less uh, at less at that point. But what, what LLD does is it tries to read through everything only once. So it's kind of, a, I guess, almost like you call a backpatching assembler. So as opposed to like a two-pass assembler where you read everything once, then work out what you need to do on the first pass, where all the sizes are, then you do another pass and do all the content. Uh, another way of doing it is like a back patch where you basically go through once, working out where you need to patch all of the things and then sort of um, um, do the sort of copy and then sort of figure out the patches, which tends to be, a, it tends to make it harder to, harder to write the program in the first place, um, but it does mean that you're generally passing through you're passing through the content generally once. So I think it's generally, it started off with an emphasis on performance and it's been actively tracked um, and um, almost every patch that goes in is sort of assessed for performance. So I think partly it's just, it's probably not had enough time to, because I think gold started with this same goal, but whether over, you know, five to 10 years, more stuff's been added in, more features have been added in, um, it's probably may have slowed down over time. Um, so it may be that LLD is skipping some steps that the other linkers are doing, um, that sort of thing. And it might be that as it gains more features, it might end up slowing down um, over time. But, but I think at the moment there's a sort of an aggressive sort of, um, it, you know, emphasis on performance and reviews. So I think that, that uh, um, it will hopefully maintain that o o over time. Okay. <coughs> Right. Okay. Um, I, it certainly does. It, it's got um, incremental code folding, and it's certainly got um, support for the ELF SHF merge um, strings. Um, but so it does deduplicate strings. I don't think it does duplication deduplication of debug strings. So I don't think um, at the moment. I think debug is very much a black box at the moment. Um, it's got some simplified relocation handling for it, but it's not trying very hard to compress debug information at the moment. Uh, that, that's my understanding. I haven't looked too much into that. But yeah, I can imagine if you do some special handling of debug. I mean, for those of you who don't know, um, if you the amount of debug information totally swamps um, non-debug information. So when I mentioned that one and a half gigabyte um, Clang executable that comes down to about thirty without debug information. That so you, you you know if you compile with with gigabytes you're really hurting your linker uh, at this particular point. And so if you start actually peering into debug information and debug information is normally um, encoded in things like something called ULEB encoding. So you can't just jump into the middle of it and do things. So um, if you if you're going to process gigabytes worth of debug information you're going to slow your linker right down. But you might get a much smaller output, which will then help your debugger start up quickly. So, a bit of a trade off there. Uh, but yeah, as far as I know, it doesn't do an awful lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, just to add on that, uh, I can't provide actual data, but um, it's in the GCC context, so yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I, mean, I don't want to discover the same thing. So, um, I've been building 
which is a zeal lot and rebuilt for just a tiny change and the linking takes a long time, mm. obviously also. And I at this time very much, very, very much drop down if, if I use this strict debugging formation stuff. Mm. And then you only have your executable to link and well the, the debugger takes longer to read them mm. at least in the virtual files, but that I can read them. Yeah. <coughs> so I guess that's actually where the slowness in the Googling or my Yes, yes, so certainly uh, it's one of the things I, I say I would def definitely post those, um, take those performance numbers with a severe pinch of salt. Other thing, LLD and gold are multi-threaded, BFD is not. It's quite difficult to get an actual, are these linkers, you know, anyone who's done any compiler to compiler benchmarking will tell you how difficult it is to actually match up so you've got a roughly fair comparison of what compiler is actually doing at what optimization level. So um, I would take that as just a, you might want to give it a try, please measure your own code at that particular point, but yeah, so. So besides the build system, did you have to do any changes in Firefox or Chrome? Uh, no, I didn't. I just, um, uh, well, for the, for the most part, I, I just chose the last link step. So there may be a case of where getting it all of the intermediate parts. Um, so what I did, I cheated. I basically said, um, I'm going to go in to the, the directory that they, the, the bin utils directory they created, and I created a sim link in that one. So I just copied it from there. So that, that's not very nice um, uh, at that particular point. E um, yes, um, I, I, don't, I don't know if I went all from the start, whether they would have started. Um, certainly more work to be, to, to, be to be done at that point. Certainly I think so, uh, there's been, I'd certainly say it, it would be a good chance for Chromium, because I think, I think some Google internal people, have, I, think that's, I think they may even use LLD on x86 instead of the Microsoft linker, whatever, so yeah, okay. What about LTO? So LTO, the actual thing is the linker actually doesn't play much of a part in LTO. So um, it's, and I know it's called link time optimization, but it's really only link time optimization. The linker, all the linker's responsibility for that is to collect the bit code files together and spit them back at, at, the, um, pl at, the, um, at the code gen. So, um, so it, yes, LTO is supported in LLD, but it doesn't actually do much more than just say, ah, oh, I see this file is bit code, spit it back at the um, LTO code generator. Yeah, no, it's... it's yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Any more questions? Yes. What's it like to work on in terms of sort of k and the most complex... So, thing? well, okay, so it, it, it's uh, so under quite heavy development, so it, it's often... Yeah, okay, so I've got... Okay. Sorry, I've got to repeat the question. What is, L, what, what is um, LLD like to develop on? So, um, so it's quite a dense code base. There's not actually that many lines of code, but it's quite heavy C++11, um, and it's quite, you know, the, uh, almost everything, every sort of bit of code does something. Um, it's so, uh, so it's quite, 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 it does take a while to get your head around what the various dependencies are. So you know what I mentioned about everything being read once. One of the difficulties about that is that you, you could, well, one of the most difficult bits about linker development is knowing what assumptions that you can make at each point in the link. Because at every point you're going from an abstract representation to a concrete one. And you might find that you've broken the assumptions that something's made later on or before. So, um, so I, th I think from based on, on my sort of experience with other linkers, it's slightly harder to get started with um, just because it's, it's, a, it's quite dense. Um, but once you kind of crack the, or get your mind around the model that it's using, it's fairly fast because it's not that much of a lines of code. You can search around it very quickly, that type of thing. And, and it's quite, it's very actively refactored. So <coughs> it's probably going to be quite difficult to maintain downstream patches other than it's, it's, it's quite easy to maintain downstream features so for example if you wanted a downstream feature where you kind of said call out to a function that implements my downstream feature and don't touch any of the generic bits of the code you'll probably be fine um, but if you start say oh I'm going to add a bit to a data structure you might find that a week's time someone's completely changed that so yes it is it is not great for um, code stability right, right, right now, I think. But, but that's got a good and a bad thing, because it means it does move forward quite fast, yeah.
Do you know which company are investing in energy pool during the development process? Okay. Um, so from what I know, that, so this is the question was who's investing in LLD. So um, uh, in terms of companies, uh, I, mm, as, as far as I know, that's, that's public information. Um, that is that um, the main maintainers at, um, is at Google. Um, I think there's some work from Sony Computer Entertainment. Um, I guess that I think that's also sort of done from the BSD base um, at that CP. And there's quite a lot of people coming from the BSD community. So I would say largely from companies. There's people from processor manufacturers, so Linaro, ARM, AART64 type thing. I think the main MIPS maintainer, I think, I, I, I don't know whether he works for MIPS, but I, I'm, it's very possible that, 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 that he does. So besides the processor manufacturers wanting support for their own architectures, I, I'd say it's the usual sort of suspects of the large companies, that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, that, other than that, look at the maintainers, look at their email addresses is probably what I would say. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you told us that um, we should not use the LOD if you do not if we do not have two users. Yeah. Uh, but LOD is much much faster if I see that than LOD. And the question is, um, if we try to use LOD in a production system, yeah. uh, would we have to, to worry about breaking the, the software uh, that comes up? Well, uh, all I say is that you, you're at, you're at a higher risk. Um, in, in theory. It's all there and it's working, but um, you, uh, you you basically have if you have ld.bfd, you've got everyone and his ma every man and his dog linking Linux applications every day with it. So you've got a huge test space full of people. So um, it's just that at the moment your risk is higher because the user base is lower. Um, so um, it, 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 it's uh, it, quite quantifying how high that risk is. I. I don't know. Certainly, with the amount of BSD things that are being linked right now, I would say certainly on AMD 64, AOT 64, if your application is not trying to do anything too clever, um, bits that gives linkers trouble are often complicated linker scripts, um, large amounts of thread local storage, or weird uses of thread local storage, or trying to directly um, place things with, you know. Um, so if you're, if you're doing a pretty much vanilla Linux application or shared library, you shouldn't have any problems. It's when you're using special linker features uh, is probably where you'll find that you'll start getting problems, is what I would say. Okay. So I think I... Oh, we've got one more. Have you tried using a mixture of linkers? So say if I package something and I built it with LLD, and then a downstream user tries to use GCC with the BFD linker with the shared library, is that something that's known to work or just nobody tried? Um, so the question is, is, can you mix linker development, say link a Linux shared library with one linker and, um, a, a di and, a, uh, and then say your downstream user used a different linker to actually use it? Um, so yes, I have tested that at least in interactively. Generally, that should work because um, at most point, you're, you're, um, when you actually link against a dynamic library, pretty much all that, you, that the downstream linker, I'll call it the one that the user uses, is just reading the symbol table, and um, as long as LLD has created the symbol table correctly and the versions correctly, then all of the real work of generating all of the code to interface with that library is done by the user's linker. So um, it's fairly low risk that, 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 that that's the case. So yeah, that should be, should be fine. Okay, I'll probably best stop that now and change over to the next one, but thank you very much for listening.